<laughs> uh, it's kind of crazy. Two days ago, I hiked 23 miles going after muley bucks, and I saw a pile of them, but just nothing quite what I was looking for. And today, I walked maybe 400 yards and <laughs> shot probably my best white tail to date. <laughs> uh, actually, I saw four bucks this morning, and they were just little guys. And then they were all kind of together, and then I saw a doe pop out. I was like, oh, this might, these might be kind of like a bunch of little satellite bucks. And sure enough, I saw this guy, and I was just like, oh gosh, need to go into hunt mode. And so I just put the, put the beat on him and pulled the trigger, and he fell instantly, and pretty cool. He is all sorts of full of character. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, thanks buddy. It's Thanksgiving morning. I gotta get this guy cut up and taken care of so I can get back home and have Thanksgiving with my family. So, gotta get busy. <laughs> and welcome back. In today's vlog, I'm gonna show you how to do a European mount via boiling to this buck right here. One really cool thing about this buck is that I actually got trail camera footage, just like a tiny glimpse of this thing um, from the year prior. And prior to pulling the trigger on this guy, I'd never seen him before, but I knew he existed and he was definitely one that I was looking for. So uh, let's get to boiling. This is what I'm going to do the skull in. Uh, this is called a Bridger boiler. It's basically just a portable European mounting boiling device. The propane tank comes with it when you buy it. It actually fits inside this thing and it's portable because a lot of states, if you harvest an animal, you're not allowed to transfer it either out of the county or over state lines until you boil the skull. And that's to prevent CWD from transferring. So we're gonna start off, put the skull in, put water in, light the burner, and get to boiling. So one cool thing about the Bridger boiler is that it's sized to fit a variety of skulls from a moose to an elk to an antelope to a deer. So the, the depth of it's a little bit different. What you don't want to have happen is have uh, the portion of the antler to go under the water because that will end up bleaching out. So they've got these little cross rods here. There's also a cross rod down there that helps keep it up. Pretty slick. The metal on that thing is really hot, so I went and got some uh, leather gloves. All right, the other thing the Bridger boiler has is these little plates right here that slide on the back and they help uh, keep a lot of that heat from escaping. So another kind of slick system here. So the concept for European mounting a skull with the boiling method is really pretty simple. You're just putting uh, the skull with the hide off into boiling water and you're gonna run it kind of at a simmer and every 15 or so minutes you're gonna pull it out and scrape, 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 try to get as much uh, meat and debris off as you can and then put it back in the water and just keep repeating this boiling process until it is free of all the meat and debris. As you can see from inside my house here, I am a big fan of the European mounts. They don't really cost much, they don't take up much space, and for the most part I can do them myself. I've done most of them myself. I've had a few other people do them in the past as well. Um, I'll cover kind of that cost breakdown and what that looks like a little bit later. So first step is to get the water boiling, and second step is to just let the skull kind of simmer in boiling water for maybe about 15 minutes. Um, after that I'm gonna pull it out scrape, 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 get some junk and debris off. And then after that, I'm going to drop in a couple of dishwasher detergents. It's gonna help with the degreasing process. And basically, I'm just gonna repeat that process until it is free of debris. about my favorite part which is getting the brain out it's uh yeah kind of gross but got to get the brain out because if you don't the brain juices will get all in your water and it'll kind of like stain the skull a little bit greenish color so lovely fortunately Bridger Boiler provides you with this little tool you can reach inside the brain cavity and pull stuff out So 
So I've been boiling and scraping and boiling and scraping for about an hour and a half now. And as you can see, it's almost all off. Not quite there. So what I'm using to scrape uh, this extra meat and stuff off is just this knife right here. I like something that's like a like a fixed blade, like hard hard thing that I can really scrape and get in there. And then when you're trying to reach in and grab the brains, I've got this little tool right here. I'm actually gonna reach into this hole right here and dig around and scramble and then flip the thing upside down and just kind of pull pull it out. The other trick is just hold, hold the skull upside down like this and just shake it. Or you can bang it on something. And that makes the brains come out too. <laughs> Lovely. I'm gonna keep scraping and boiling, scraping and boiling. On average, every skull usually takes like two to four hours. It's getting cleaner. Still got some work to do down here, but I'd say she's 70% there. Back in the water. It took me quite a while there to get the rest of the kind of the remaining tissue and stuff off, probably another half hour, maybe 45 minutes even. But between a little wire brush and pliers, um, I was basically able to scrape and rub off kind of the rest of the remaining tissue. So next step is to apply the bleach and make this skull nice and white. So this is a 30% volume uh, hydrogen peroxide solution. Got it at the old beauty supply shop. If you work in a hair salon, you can usually get a higher percent hydrogen peroxide, but if you're just um, average Joe, this is the highest concentration that you can get. But basically I'm just gonna dump some of this out onto here and I'm just gonna paint it onto the skull. side applied to all sides and kind of little cavities here in the skull. Now I'm just gonna let this sit overnight and tomorrow it should be pretty white. If it's not quite white enough um, I'll just apply another coat of peroxide and it'll be good to go. So next step if you want to like hang it on the wall from like a nail or a screw all you got to do is take a little piece of, I usually use some like metal wire or if you have like copper wire, that looks pretty. So you run it through these two, these two holes here in the back of the skull and then you bring it out um, this main brain kind of cavity stem here and make a little loop and you can hang it um, that way, which is how I pretty much have everything in my house mounted. Oh. So I've been working on this one European mount for six hours. Started at 2 p.m. and it is 8 o'clock already. Six hours, not even done yet. Gotta let the thing sit overnight, potentially have to reapply another coat of peroxide, and then I gotta run the wire through to hang it. Potentially another hour of work to do one European mount on a relatively small skull. So when you do kind of a cost slash opportunity breakdown of a do-it-yourself uh, European mount or having someone else do it, if you got a whole day to spare, you got the time, go for it. You can buy a turkey boiler and a propane tank and then just get a big metal pot. You're probably gonna spend 50, 60 bucks to go that route. Or you can go the Bridger boiler route, the base unit on that, which includes propane tank, as well as peroxide and some of the little tools to help get some of that tissue off. That thing runs 500 bucks. So it's a pretty big investment. But if you are doing hunts, that you're required to boil the skull before you bring it back into your state. You basically make your money back after probably three skulls. Or if you don't have time to do it, most taxidermists these days are doing European mounts. I mean, I've got a buddy that it's like a hundred bucks a pop. So if you don't have a whole day to commit to boiling a skull, it's pretty dang convenient just to give it to a taxidermist or give it to a friend that's gonna charge you a hundred to 200 bucks to do the Euro. 
So when you're considering, you know, whether to do your own European mount or have somebody else do it, it's all just kind of an opportunity slash time cost breakdown. I will wrap this vlog up with just a couple of tips that I've found really beneficial when doing euros or when prepping your skulls to send off to the taxidermist. This, by the way, is a wolf that I killed in the Northwest Territories many moons ago. In order to get it back across Canadian customs, uh, the outfitter had to, they just basically boiled it out and then when I got home, I boiled it again and then added um, peroxide to it to make it nice and white, but pretty sick. <laughs> so first tip when it comes to doing your mounts, uh, you wanna get all of the hide off of the skull. Second tip is if you're planning to do the European mount within a couple days or even a week, honestly, you can leave that skull outside there's no issue there. If you are not planning to get to the Euro, you know, like the skull that I am doing today of my deer, I shot that buck six months ago. So what I did is I wrapped him up in a plastic bag and then fortunately I had enough freezer space and I threw the skull in the freezer. What that does is it prevents the skull from rotting and when things rot and, and if they're in a bag, um, that, that moisture and just the rotting, like it makes the the bone really brittle. So if you left a skull in a garbage bag for like six months, then you were to go to boil it, there's gonna be a bunch of maggots and flies and stuff in there. They're probably gonna take care of most of the meat, but when you go to boil it, the bones are gonna be really, really brittle and you're gonna have a hard time working with that and you're probably gonna have to use a bunch of epoxy to actually kind of glue those parts back together. So you don't want that. So in an ideal world, you put a bag over it, a bag's going to kind of keep the moisture in and prevent it from drying out, and then you're gonna throw that into a freezer or a cold space, and that's gonna prevent it from rotting. Next tip, so when you've got all of that little fine tissues and stuff kind of inside the, the brain cavity and whatnot, one really easy way to get that out is if you have a pressure washer, you can even go to the car wash, but basically take the skull after you've boiled it for maybe two hours and, and then take it to the pressure washer, spray out, the skull with high pressure washer. It's gonna it's gonna blow out all of that loose debris and probably save you a lot of time and prevent you from having to kind of reach up the nasal cavity and pick and pull um, little pieces out. The next tip, the best detergent that I've found to use to help in the degreasing process is from Arm & Hammer. It's just like the general Arm & Hammer uh, detergent. It's a powder form. I wouldn't dump like Dawn dish soap into there. It seems like the powder form of detergents, especially the Arm & Hammer, do the best. Shout out to my friend Phil that keyed me in on Arm & Hammer. And the last tip, if you're doing predators, bears especially, bears tend to have really greasy skulls. So you might do a boil and you might even apply peroxide and then like a couple months later, especially on the, the back side of the head here, it's going to kind of, grease is going to start leaching through and it's going to kind of discolor the back. And so with predators, bears especially, sometimes you'll need to apply a second coat of peroxide. All right, well that is a wrap on this vlog. <laughs> Got my next uh, specimen that I need to boil, and that's this antelope. Late night of making bringing soup. But hope you enjoyed this vlog, hope you learned something. And if you liked it, hit the like button. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe. I will see you in the next one.